Welcome to the Metal Voice on the second start. Once uh, again on the show, uh, Tony Martin, of course, you know, solo artist, a man who's appeared on over 76 albums as a yeah. guest or as a uh, as his own albums. Uh, the reason why we're doing the show is I reached out to Tony. I said, Tony, you know what? Your album was released at the beginning of 2022, mm -hmm. January 14th. And I go, people... There are so many releases this year that people may have forgotten that was it was released in 2022, and it's get it's good to get back on the radar since we're coming to the year end, and a lot of people are sort of looking at the best albums of 2022, and I think it's one of them, so that's why I wanted to do this. Well, that's very kind of you. Yeah. A, re a reboot. A, a reboot. reboot. Yes, indeed. Um, it, yes, it's still going out. It's still out there. I mean, we believe it or not, we're still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> sounds strange but we were doing um we were asked to do some more tracks for a vinyl version mm. of the album and <laughs> we're still doing it um we got kind of distracted with stuff and um there was a bit of confusion between the two record labels who was doing what um and um <laughs> so we're still on it but um i'm hopefully for the anniversary or, or maybe just a little bit after that we'll have the vinyl version and then other stuff you know to go with it um also we didn't um, manage to get any videos uh, created yet which sort of we got held back with that people were so tied up so um it all sort of got stepped back but yeah we're still on it and then join it still getting great words about the album which i'm really pleased about and um it's nice to have this opportunity with you guys to sort of um, let everybody know I'm still here, <laughs> you know. So, so what's a go ahead, Alan? Sorry. Revisit Thorns is is the delay with the vinyl because of the uh, problems getting the vinyl? Is that one of the reasons, or? Uh, no, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> we we're just not working fast enough. I mean, we we're we're on it. Um, some delays, uh, and I've had some ear infections and stuff, which uh, took me out of action for a, a little while. Um, just stuff. You know, things that you don't even think are around the corner and just pop up and you go, oh, crap, you have to deal with that first and then sort of move on. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's just us. We're, we're behind time, and um, but we are still on it and uh, still enjoying every minute of it. It's great still working with Scott. He is sending me so much material. It's mad. I can't keep up with him, to be honest. So, uh, so when, when can we expect the reissue? we'll call it the vinyl reissue of this album with all the bonus songs. I guess you have bonus songs. Is that what it is? It's, it's That's what it is. That's what we're working on. We've got some um, extra songs. The problem was we, the, uh, they wanted to take some songs off the album to get them to fit on a mm -hmm. vinyl. And I didn't want to do that. And so they said, well, there's only one other choice and that's to write more songs <laughs> and then we'll do a double vinyl release with like you know um extra uh, tracks and stuff like that so okay that works for me so um i got in touch with scott and sure enough he just started <laughs> sending songs <laughs> riffs and riffs and riffs unbelievable how how much he how prolific he is um then it was choice which one do we choose <laughs> um so it, it just got like a, a a little bit draggy, like, you know, we were sort of dragging behind our own sort of tails, if you know what I mean. Um, and like I said, I had a couple of ear infections, which put me out of action for a little while. So, um, uh, yeah, we're still on it. We're still on Is it. there like a, a due date? Like it's going to be released in 2023? I'm, I'm just discussing that with the record labels now. Um, um, I, I'm not sure at the moment how quick or how slow they can get a vinyl pressed and into circulation. Mm -hmm. um, so as soon as I know that, then I'd be, I'd be able to sort of tell you what we're looking at as a timeline. Um, all, all I can do really is do my bit and the, and the record labels are twiddling their thumbs going, come on, come on. You know, I'm sort of so, so the good news is, Alan, the good news is it'll be in the top, 2020 album category and the 2023 <laughs> album category. Uh, yeah, it could be. <laughs> right. it could be good, yeah. Couldn't it? We could have like the same, like a time shift. You could have like the same album twice <laughs> spread over, I don't know, 10 years or something. God knows. <laughs> <laughs> Triple album, quadruple uh, album. 
I have to say, I mean, you know, we're we're still enjoying ourselves, as you can probably tell. Um, we're we're all pretty happy and 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 everything, but just events and things, you know, got, sort of got in the way. And but and it's nice to know that the the fans are still because they still talk about it, you know. And I'm 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 uh, a bit of a Facebook. <laughs> I don't know. I'm now. I won't call myself that. Um, I'm on Facebook a lot, <laughs> and. Um, they uh, still talk about it and um, really enjoying it. It's almost become like, a, oh, that classic <laughs> sort of thing, you know. Oh, yeah, I listen to that all the time, kind of thing. Um, so it's nice to know that, that it's still in people's hearts and players and stuff like that. So um, I, I guess from that angle, it's it's a bit of a success in that way. Okay. I don't have any uh, sales figures yet. Uh, we're coming up to the first anniversary, so um, when that comes in February, I think we'll know like how it's done. But it would be great, you know, to think that he got like album of the year or something. Yeah, yeah, uh, that would really cheer us up. That would. Tony, you know, I asked this of other bands recently that came back and 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 you know after a hiatus, a long hiatus, but have a certain pedigree. I mean, you know, you did this album. Where do you think it's going to fit into today's market? Um, that's a good question, isn't it? Because, I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, sometimes music comes out and you go, what the hell is that doing out? You know, I mean, um, but on the, uh, on the other hand, I mean, I, I think that people's listening patience is, has grown. People are listening to so much more stuff. And I know my kids are getting into really old material and, like in not the same way that I did with my dad. I mean, I, I never listened to anything, you know, of my father's. <laughs> they must be joking. But um, yeah, but my um, father was listening to Nana Muscari, so uh, you know, it was a little oh, different really? for me. Yes, yeah. You see, the last album I bought was Elvis Presley, you know, the um, the live version they did with an orchestra about a year and a half ago or something like that. It was, it was big production, massive thing. Um, Fabulous. No, I I hated Elvis Presley when I was a kid. I never listened to Elvis Presley, but wow. I mean, you know, there's some great stuff. And so I think people's listening experiences are getting bigger and bigger. So I don't know where it fits, really. I'm, I'm hoping that people like it and just keep li listening to it and, and buying it, downloading it, whatever. What about, what about, you know, what, sorry. Yeah. Carry on, guys. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. If you had something to end off with. Yeah, I was just going to say, once we get some videos completed, that will sort of start to tell the story better. You know, um, uh, at the moment, we've been concentrating on the audio part. And because the band or band, the guys on the album are so spread out, it's really difficult to get them all in one place, all in one go. So um, yeah, it, it's kind of logistical stuff as well. We have to... Uh, Try and work out how we do it. We we've been toying with green screen things, mm -hmm. and uh, that's got a certain success about it, but um, nothing quite like having all the guys in, in the same room together. So I don't know. We're we're still working on it. It's, it, it's uh, more complicated than I thought it was going to be, but um, still, I, I love the album. You know, I'm very very proud of it, and uh, very proud of all the guys that and uh, girls that played on it. Yeah, really cool. What about hitting the road now? So you have the album. You're going to probably come out with some videos, put the bonus tracks. Yeah. In 2023, we're looking at the reissue of this album. What about hitting the road and doing some dates? So what are your opinions on that? That would be great, wouldn't it? I, I, you know, I would love to do that. Again, it's logistical stuff getting around people because I don't have a, a band per se. Um, I have to hire the guys that sort of work with me on the road. Um, that depends on if they're free. Um, the COVID thing is kind of more or less gone now-ish, really, mostly. Um, there are still the remnants of that kind of thing happening, but it would be good. And it's always in mind, you know, I, I would love to get back out there and do it. Um, but we'd be starting from scratch right from the very beginning and building it from the ground up. So it's uh, it would take a bit of time for us to get that. So what I said was, hey, I mean, we're all still writing with Scott. And um, what if we do another album and then tour two albums together? I don't know. Um, you know, that, that's another option open to us at the moment. 
Um, right. But uh, it is in mind. I mean, I would love to get back out there and, and you know, be on the road again. I, I, I miss that. So the, the record company would be open to a, a second album. Is it the, uh, your contract like on a per album basis or you can? Yeah, well, um, the contract was for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess whatever I can throw at them. <laughs> you could reissue it for the next eight years. That's what you'll do. <laughs> yeah. There's <laughs> Thorns one, two. And another song. <laughs> <laughs> so um, could be, couldn't it? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it, it was for eight years, so I, I guess whatever I can throw at them. They were certainly open to more albums, so um, which is very, it reminds me a bit of when I was in Sabbath and, and um, when I first joined Sabbath, going right, 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 right but way back, it was the first time I'd been in a band that was expected to have an album out. Oh, look at that. You were, <laughs> the Eternal Idol. Um, and they said, oh, when we do the next album, I'm going, oh, wow. You know, because I, it, before that, it was always trying to get a record deal and, you know, knocking on people's doors and begging and saying, please give me a record deal. Um, but then they just expected you to do it. And, and uh, you know, you're lucky if you're in that position where, you know, you can do what you do uh, and uh, hand it over and then the record label do their stuff it, it, it's uh, they put a lot of faith in you as an artist and I, I do appreciate that and i feel very lucky you know i can kind of do that um but yeah um another album i mean we've certainly got enough stuff to be working on good just, um, I, I think he, Scott he, sent me about a hundred, what <laughs> hundred or something, Jeez. track riff tracks. Or something well, well, where does where does the this album end, and when does the next project begin? Right, maybe that's the question. I know, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> don't. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Uh, I have to say, I mean, it never becomes clear until it's done. Uh, and because, uh, you know, I'm just working on like, uh, even like today, um, working on one of the songs for, uh, uh, for the extra tracks on, on Thorns. And it, it's only just come to mind that actually this is this is really good. Should I keep that for the next album? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, don't do that to me. So now I've, I'm like in another, <laughs> we're getting so much good stuff. I'm going, oh, keep that. No, no, use it. No, keep it. No, use it. So it, it just gets <laughs> those mind games go on in your head, you know, when you're writing and, and doing that sort of stuff. So um, eventually it will all slot into place and I'll go, OK, right, that's it. And and I'll have it. All. That's a nice problem to have. It's too much material. Yeah. I, I mean, I have to say I, I people know me for, well, partly for lyrics. And so I tend to take time when I'm writing lyrics it, it, you know I, sometimes not very often sometimes uh i can get it really quick if i've got the initial idea in place then i can sort of just write about that idea but if i'm still hunting for the idea that that fits the music i do like to take time on it and and work that out so you can be sitting on the music for you know ages sometimes waiting for the lyrics to arrive in my head mm -hmm. but um I, I do know once it's once it's there it suddenly clicks and i go okay oh yeah that's it and so then i'll know then tony when you're in sabbath i asked blaze the same question were there any regrets in the sense that blaze felt blaze bailey was when he was an iron maiden he felt that he should have spoke out more but, but because he was the new guy he didn't want to sort of stir the pot but he regrets today not speaking out you know maybe they should have tuned the songs a little lower for his vocal range just as an example are there any regrets you said you know what i should have spoke out at that point in time things would have been different right um that's a uh, that's a good question it's uh, it's it comes under the band politics heading um well band politics are a really weird thing um for to begin with it, it wasn't my band <laughs> black sabbath you, you was you was hired mostly um to be in black sabbath the only you know people who could say they were the band is obviously the original guys um the rest of us were there to put on a show and um to carry the black sabbath uh, legacy forward 
which uh, I felt, you know, honoured and uh, privileged to do that. Um, so I didn't have, and I still don't have any say in like, you know, what goes on. You know, they're re-releasing this uh, Tony Martins thing yet. I honestly, I have no idea what the what's happening with that. I know it's going to be next year, but that's all all I know really. Um, and it's still, it was the same back then. Never really knew anything, and my, my, I had my own personal manager. Tony had a manager. Geezer Butler had a manager. <laughs> there was like it's a bit like Spinal Tap, you know. You get like everybody's got their own manager, and it sort of go. You'd speak to your manager, then he'd phone up somebody else's manager, and he'd go down to them, and then he'd come back up. Me, to me and Alan have two managers, so we have to, our managers speak to each uh, other before we do a call with you. So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was a bit mad. You know, being in the band, and uh, a lot of the time you was reading between the lines to try and get a, <laughs> an idea of what was happening. You know, um, because direct questions didn't really work, and and you'd sort of go. I I used to say to myself, I, I don't understand that the blokes only stood like you know ten feet away from me, <laughs> uh, you know, and they won't speak. So, oh, just uh, speak to my manager about it. Ah, okay. So you go up to your manager across to their manager, down and back up again. It's just, it was a nightmare. So speaking out, as you asked, it didn't really happen like that. Um, you sort of posed the question. It went round and round and round, and then you kind of waited for an answer. Um, I, I was on pretty good terms with the guys. I mean, I, I could speak reasonably freely. But um, I was, you know, told in no uncertain terms from time to time, not all, not always, but from time to time, <laughs> it's nothing to do with you. And my manager, um, he used to get so frustrated. And in fact, he kind of did himself out of a job, really, because the band Sabbath was managed by Iomi's guys. And so my manager was just sat there twiddling his thumbs mostly for most of the time, you know, trying to get through and never getting an answer. So it was it was always hard work, you know, being in that situation. Um, so as much as I would have wanted to have spoken out, mm, you know, yeah, you just had to sort of go with the flow half the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quickly, Tony, you know, I, I'm, I revisited Tony Allen's book here. And it's all, that's his recollection from the time. He's able and he's he's allowed to have his recollection. But I'd like to throw out a few subjects and get your recollections from the time. Not saying okay, that anybody's Simon. right or anybody's wrong. It's just the recollection. <laughs> of the, apparently, nobody was ever getting paid back then with the management. And I mean, you know, look at IRS records for Headless Cross. I remember couldn't even find that in the stores back in the day. So, uh, hmm. you know, was is it true that nobody was getting paid and that's one of the reasons why Eric Singer or Ray Gillen left the band? I don't know about those guys, actually. Um, I only met them a few times and they didn't really speak to me about it. Um, so I can't really tell you what uh, pains they might have been going through. For me, um, it was a bit difficult you know, sort of getting money. But I had faith, though. I, you know, I didn't... I was never really worried that it wouldn't sort of come. It was, you know, it was like the checks in the post kind of thing. But... Um, <laughs> no, it not, would arrive not, eventually. Yeah, kind of. Um, and, he, and he usually always did. I mean, I, I never had any real issues like that. Um, but... I mean, Sabbath as a name band, as an entity, um, were very, in, when I first joined, they were very short of money. I mean, they when I did the Eternal Idol, I mean, they came back from Montserrat, where they'd recorded the majority of that um, album. And uh, I was told right back then, I said, there's no money. You know, this, it's going to be tough. Um <laughs> So um, th that was sort of banding around right from the beginning of my era anyway. Um, but slowly, you know, we sort of built it up and we, we got it into a position where it was really working quite well and money was sort of starting to come in. Um, but, um, I, you know, I, I started off as a, an apprentice and ended up with in the same way mo mostly. Nothing much changed. <laughs> And yeah, it seems, yeah, you know, yeah. whenever they needed help, just call Tony. He'll be back and give us a hand. 
Yeah, you was know, rereading my... this, I was surprised to reread the book the other day and, and to find out that dehumanizer because of some friction between Ronnie James Dio and Cozy Powell, that you were actually brought back in to do some songs on dehumanizer even. Yeah, I don't know what that friction was. Um, they wouldn't really uh, tell me much about it uh, other than um, Tony said um, each time they came back to the studio, the settings had changed or something like that. So I guess somebody else had been in there and re you know worked it or something like that um but uh, i don't know how that fits into you know animosity or uh, you know leaving the band i don't know what that's about but um yeah we did try and i went down there and um i gave it a go the the, the problem was uh, i would have what well i would have had to rewrite everything because i couldn't use uh, the melodies and lyrics that Ronnie had done, I was going to have to rewrite my own, um, and there just wasn't enough time right. to do that, to rewrite it. And so I said, guys, I think the best thing for you to do is carry on with Ronnie if you can, find a way of you know working it out and, and getting that done, and then maybe we can sort of talk again afterwards. And and that's what happened. We ended up you know getting back on it afterwards. Guys, just one second. I got to get the door. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Ding dong. Hold on. Hold on. If it's not the washing, Amazon. It's the door. <laughs> oh, I gotta go get when the we door. first started, we used to do this in his basement. We only live about a kilometer away. It takes me 20 minutes to walk to his place. But with COVID, we got used to doing it this way. Uh, and in the early days, you'd be in his basement and then you would hear the washing machine or the dishwasher <laughs> go. Yeah. <laughs> it's real life, ain't it? That's it. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's it's fun, you know, and it's I like what you said about the, the younger generations revisiting, you know, you got solo albums by Ronnie Atkins and Biff Byford from Saxon and and now yourself and, and so many other artists. It's I hope that, you know, that the younger generation can pick up on, on your legacies and, of course, everything that you you brought to the table over the decades. So, yeah, I mean, you were saying that I was on um, 76 or something albums, like 80 now. Oh, um, yeah, I've I've done another couple since then. <laughs> um, but um, yes, I mean, I I love that people are still finding out about you know the the stuff that I've done in the past. Um, it is a lot of stuff, and a majority of it is not in existence anymore. But every now and then, I can point somebody, you know, or the fans towards stuff that I've done in the past. One of the recent ones I just uh, brought to people's attention was a, a little stint I had with Alaska with Bernie Marsden. Oh, yeah, that is. You know, it's a different kind of music completely, but, um, you know, it's one of the things that I've done. So, you know, I, I, I do things like that every now and then I raise people's awareness of the stuff I've done in the past. And I yeah, literally so it, just got Bernie Marsden's book in the mail yesterday. I haven't even had a chance to open it, but I'm... I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to reading that. The, the, yeah, the, I bet I'm not in it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I gotta find he, out. He doesn't. He doesn't speak to me anymore. Oh. But um, yeah, um, uh, yeah. It's everybody's writing a book. People ask me to do one, but I just, I'm just not. Um, oh, what would I say? I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not disciplined enough, really. Uh, you know, the, they sort of said it has to be done in some kind of chronological order. Well. I'm okay with remem remembering the events, but if you ask me what date it was, I'm fucked. I'm just gone. <laughs> so, you know, oh, they got researchers to do that for yeah. you. Yeah. So, um, so it's a no go on the book. Is that what you're saying, or not yet? Uh, uh, it, oh, I'm not sure. I'm still trying to decide. I mean, uh, to be honest, I mean, mostly stuff gets put out on Facebook or some other. You know, like doing interviews with you and, and, you know, and things like that. And so stuff comes out, which, you know, is probably what you'd want to put in a book. But um, me being me, uh, I tend to sort of just rabbit on, talk about stuff. So uh, probably a book wouldn't work now. <laughs> it's all been if, said. If I like that, you know, speaking of letting things come out, I mean, you know, back in the day, because the record was so hard to find and it was kind of lean yeah. years for Black Sabbath when you were the Tony Martin era, we can call it. But I revisiting those albums decades later. Geez, there's like really strong albums. I just like to get your thoughts on cross purposes. It's my favorite of the catalog with the Tony Martin years. 
What's, okay. your, what's your recollection of Geezer's, Geezer's back in the band? What's your recollection of, of that album? Uh, it was fab. It was really, really good. Um, we had a really good time and we was getting on really well. And at, at the time, Geezer Butler said it was the best album he'd ever done. <laughs> doesn't say that now, but it did. Nah. <laughs> what the, what? But and we, used to, we, we used to stay at the studio. It was like a live-in studio. You know, everybody had their room there, so out in the countryside so that we were all pretty much together most of the time um and it was a laugh you know it was it was all right um not much not much tension in it at all really we we had a great time and the songs were going like really well um um so i i I think i thought that was a good uh part of my era i mean I have to say, it's great working with Cozy Pal for the other two. Um, and Eternal Idol, well, I didn't really have much choice or I couldn't do much with that because it was already written, so all I had to do was sing it. But, um, yeah, the cross-purposes was good, as far as I can remember, anyway. <laughs> so so they bring Ice-T in. I mean, what are your thoughts back in the day? Like, I like Ice-T, don't get me wrong. I like Ice-T. You know, even He's on Megadeth's new album, right? Is now we're talking. To, yeah, yeah. He's on Megadeth's new album. And he's on uh, one of their songs. He does a guest sort of s- spoken word in a sense, right? Yeah. But um, what are your thoughts? Now you're going back to I can't remember what year that album was released. Forbidden, but uh, ninety-five wasn't it? Was it ninety-five? Around there, yeah, yeah, probably. See, I told you was shit with dates. Um, me too. Me too. Well, you're right, right on. <laughs> uh, but so they bring an iced tea. Like, what are your first thoughts here? Wait a second, guys. Things are changing here. What's going on here? I mean, I didn't know we were going to integrate rap into our music. Yeah, that was really bad. I mean, well, um, from from most of us. Well, I didn't like it. Cozy Powell didn't like it. Jeff Nichols was, like, really uncertain about it. Um, uh, Iomi was into it, and his manager was into it. Um, but we were, like totally bemused in the beginning um and we'd sort of started uh, well I imagine this though i mean you know you've got cozy pal you know cozy pal right so imagine somebody coming into <laughs> into the writing studio and trying to tell cozy how to play drums is that what ice t uh, said ice t told him yeah, how to play drums to, get him to play in a certain way and cozy pal's looking at him going are you sure about this <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be great he said, well i don't see it myself but you know, I'll, I'll give it a try and so it was just um bizarre just really bizarre you know and and nobody was really getting it i mean the the, the thing for me was like when they sort of mentioned that ist was coming and i was i was just lost because i he, they never told me for what they didn't say he was coming to do like a, a track or a, a two tracks or the whole album, they didn't say. So, um, so I kept trying to find out, and like I was telling you earlier on, to find out information. Oh, speak to my manager and goes up the manager. So to find out any information was really hard to come by, and um, uh, in in the end, I was just I, I couldn't concentrate in the end because I didn't know. If I was, you know, singing on the album at all, but, you know, <laughs> when I was in the studio, I said, "Is this is this actually going out with my voice on it, or is he just coming in to replace my vocals and, like, you know, then sing it, and then I just get dumped?" <laughs> um, did Did you hang out with Ice T? Were you like a part? Was no, part they of did the group? it separately. They did all that separately. So I, I you know, I was left in the dark a, a lot. And so mm-hmm. and until the album actually came out, this is forbidden we're talking about. I mean, you just held it up on, uh, uh, yeah. in front of you there. Until the album came out, I didn't know what I was going to be on. I had no idea because nobody would say. And then they would just sort of like, well, they, what was the terminology? They said, um, uh, uh, keep going and we'll decide along the way or something like that. There was oh, yeah. The, something like that we'll fix it we'll in the mix it don't worry about it yeah I, so i was i was very um 
I was very lost, really. And so I, I, I really don't like the album because it brings back all of that yeah. memories for me, which was just hard work. So anyway, we went in the studio and it was a bit tense, a bit, you know, cold. Nobody was really, you know, getting on great because of all of, of, of this stuff. Um, and so we just sort of got into it and I did it, but I never felt happy with it. Not ever. And yet there were some good songs on there. And yeah. um, when we were in rehearsals, putting the songs together, not the writing studio when we had um, Ernie C and whatever. Uh, nice guys, really nice guys. But um, when we were rehearsing it just as the band, there was some great riffs and, you know, the, the songs was, uh, you know, evolving really nicely. Um, but then they kind of stopped it developing. And I think that's what um, bothered me about it because once they'd sort of said, somebody else is coming in to sing on the album and I didn't know what they were going to sing on the album, then I, I couldn't concentrate then after that. It just I, my focus went. And so. Um, <laughs> inspired setting to record an album. You know, but I, I just didn't understand it. And so I, I sort of lost faith in it completely, uh, which is a shame because we, we could have had done something with it. It's not as if they came in for, a, you know, I mean, Ernie C produced the whole thing. Um, I like and, Ernie C. I think he's a great guitar player. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. Ernie C's all right. It's just he it doesn't fit with Black Sabbath. That's the only problem. That's that right. Was the only I mean, problem. Yeah. as a guy, he's great. I used, you know, <clears throat> Ernie C. We hung out with him. He used to come to the writing studio um, and hang out with us. And so nice guy. You know, well they they were all nice guys. So that I, I don't have. I can't speak badly about them at all. It's just the situation didn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah particularly well and and i think that was kind of reflected <laughs> and also they did that crazy artwork on the album yeah. cover yeah. Which, whatever that means yeah I, I don't think that helped either you know but um anyway we did it under protest <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm glad to hear there's more songs in the way from tony martin that there's uh, a yeah. bonus vinyl uh maybe more albums in the future and uh yes yeah. Just continue I mean, success, Tony. We here's a tidbit for all of you guys, okay? And Tony knows this because I heard this, I don't know which interview, a long time ago. No, well, not too long ago. All the songs are in alphabetical order. Yeah. It's bizarre. Wow. I mean, so accident. As the World Burns, Black Widow, Book of Shadows, Crying Wolf, Damned, No Shame at All, Nowhere to Fly, Passion Killer. They're all for some bizarre, Run Like the Devil, This Is Your Dalmatian, thorns they're all in alphabetical tony was this on purpose what, 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 what was this mystical that <laughs> no, i can tell you exactly what it was um you you know when you're so uh, well you guys work with computers and stuff right and you know you you um you have your files and you you put them in folders and stuff like that and the computer puts them in alphabetical order or numerical order right yeah. Yeah. well um, I think it, I was about three quarters of the way through the album and I thought, ah, oh, I suppose I should put these songs in order. Shit, they are in order. Wow. <laughs> and I just, I couldn't believe it. The way that they they ran from one to the other was as they were in the, in the filing system. Of I've never seen this before. I've never seen this before. Honestly, I, it was not planned. And so when I looked at it and I played it and I sent it to Scott and he didn't believe it and I sent it to the record label and they didn't believe it. I said, honestly, that's just like the way that the folder collected all of those songs. And I never worked on them in that order. It's just like, oh, I've, I've worked on that, put it in a folder. And then that's how it sort of assembled itself. And it was just bizarre. I don't know anybody who's ever managed to get an album. I, I, I don't think I've ever heard. There, maybe there set. is. Maybe there is, but I've never heard. I, I don't know. I mean, it'd be, I would be love to know if anybody else has managed to do it. But it was just uh, one of those things. I, I just couldn't get my head around it for ages and ages. I kept going back on it and going, no, there must, it must be wrong. And, um, and sure enough, if I tried to change the tracks around, the album didn't sound the same. It's you know, perfect. It was. It's. It's mystical in a sense. Mad. It's just. It's, 
you know, That's I, there's some sort of... you buy a lottery ticket or you head down to the bookies. Isn't it? <laughs> there's a bet on the horses. Do you know what? I should have done on, on that day when I realized I should have gone and bought a lottery ticket. That's what I should have done. <laughs> and and you know what we should we should mention this before we go you know it's a solid album it's a i just didn't want to repeat the same thing as last time that we had the interview but it's a solid album the production is fantastic you. you got the hard-hitting songs you got the brutal songs you got the acoustic songs you got pamela moore on there you got some jazzy stuff going on yeah. keyboard solos bass solos alan you want to throw out anything there's some yeah, quirky a, stuff on there you know it, it's yeah. like it, i didn't think it would be like accepted quite so well i mean but people again this is what i was saying to you earlier on about people's patience seems mm -hmm. to be growing and listening to other stuff and so even the quirky stuff that's on there you know i mean like i said it, this the story makes more sense with the video and i can see the video in my head but like until you guys see it, when it, the story will devolve you know as, as all that sort of stuff appears but yeah so we could expect the music album. video expect the music videos we expect Indeed. more songs. We yeah. expect the Tony Martin Black Sabbath era next year. The box set is—is is that confirmed now? Uh, do you know what? Again, I spoke to Iomi's management a couple of weeks ago, and um, they're all ready. You know, they're—they're they're happy to be getting on with this, and and I think they're doing, you know, um, all finishing off the deals and like stuff like that. But I don't have a date, um, so I await the same as everybody, you know, to find out. They'll be out, and they'll tell you the day it's out. They'll say, here it is. Yeah. yeah. I probably won't even get a copy of it. I'll just go buy it. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. He interviewed Vinny Appice on one of the remakes from Heaven to Hell, and he never even yeah. got a copy. So he says, I'll, I'll take your word for it that I sound good. I, I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> Tony, here's, here's my last question to you before we let you go. Musical youth. When I found this out, I, I was pretty impressed. You passed the duchy <laughs> on the left hand side. <laughs> yeah. Your involvement in that, just quickly. Quickly. Yeah. Quickly. Um, well, um, back in those days, um, in the early eighties, I mean, I was I was uh, a, a gigging musician, you know, um, grabbing any kind of work that I could at, at the time. And and Birmingham, in England, is famous, you know, for musicians. We've had everything from reggae to rock come out mm -hmm. of this city you know it is just unbelievable the amount of stuff that comes in so there's always somebody uh doing something that needed you know a hand here or a hand there well uh, i'm a guitarist originally um i started playing guitar when i was seven and and my name was put forward um to help out with the kids in, in musical youth and the setup was um the kids went to school then their father, Freddie Waite, um, had a, a rehearsal studio in um, Birmingham. And uh, he picked out some um, really quite good musicians to take the role of each one of the kids. Mine was the guitar. Um, and then when the kids came home from school, it was our job then to teach the kids what their father had written in the day. So I was there for oh, about a year or something, you know, oh on and off God, wow. with, with, with the kids. Um, and uh, we got on okay. <laughs> I mean, Kelvin, the guitar player, he, he little was a little guitar. Monster. He had a little guitar. He had a little guitar. Yeah. I well, yeah. <laughs> they, they had, um, Kelvin was a bit of a monster. You know, he'd come home from school like, oh, man. You know, don't need one. No white man teaching me to play no guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I say, look, your father has told me that you've got to learn this. Now, stand put. No. So we used to, we used to. It was my job, like you know, to get the guitar part across anyway. And um, yeah, they were doing all right. They got really big, um, but they had a, a a few horrible things. The bass player died. Um, poor kid. Um, a couple of them got hung up on drugs and stuff, but you know, um, big hit, man. It was huge. It's massive. massive. Yeah, they hit. were um, good. I, and I worked with Dex's Midnight Runners a bit and UB40 a little bit. Um, you know, uh, come on, Eileen. Uh, yeah, that was just before me. Um, but I was there um, just after working at the studio that they recorded and rehearsed in at um, 
what is it called? Uh, Diamond Sound Studios mm -hmm. in Birmingham. Um, but yeah, I uh, I have an upbringing with rock, uh, reggae as as much as rock. Well, not quite so much as rock. But I worked with uh, one of the guys out of Aswad as well. Um, stuff, yeah, just crazy. Very, stuff. very cool stuff that needs to be put in a book, if you ask me. Um, Tony, on that note, Tony, on that note, thank you so much. You're always welcome back on the show. Promote anything you need. Thank you very you much. Want it's always a pleasure. Alan, any final words? No, just con to continue success. Thanks for all the great years of music, and we thank wish you. you all the best moving forward. Now, thank you, guys. Uh, like I said to you before, we need people like you to, you know, get the word out, to, you know, to the people about what we're doing and stuff like that. So thank you for your time. Um, it's been a pressure. I mean, a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> nope, the pressure is in Black Sabbath. Here, there's no pressure. <laughs> uh, so uh, keep rocking, huh? All right. So Thorns, pick it up. Album of 2022. Metal uh, album of 2022. There you go, people. A reminder today. Thank you, guys.